Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to this video. Myself, I'm Mr. Simon Bates. Hello. And we are obviously talking clarinets today. And this is a video about three different clarinets and the setup that we might want to use for those three clarinets if you're thinking of playing not strictly in a classical way. I think that's probably the best way to say it. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So as a working <laughs> pro, saxophone, clarinet player, woodwind or whatever, doubler, having to play shows, having to play whatever gets thrown in front of you, you need a setup of all your kit which can do that for £2,000 or under. All of these are three wooden clarinets between about £1,400 and £2,000 English. And with the combination of the mouthpiece and the leg, we're going to keep within that budget and we're going to talk to you about how these three all compare. It's a buffet, it's a baccoon, and it's a Yamaha. And we're going to get into that in just a second, starting with the buffet E13. So E13s, many years, plenty of them have sold. I mean, to be honest, over the last 30 years, it would be the top selling of this mid-range, let's call it mid-range clarinet setups. But a lot of those players maybe have had buffet student clarinets, yep. and so it feels comfortable under the hands. So how did you feel about the E13? It's, it's very comfortable to play. It's classic buffet layout. Um, you know, it, it feels to me pretty much like every other clarinet I've played over the years. Um, I used to play R13s, I've been playing Yamaha for a very long time now and, and, and the transition from that, the R13 to the Yamaha and back to this uh, is, is almost seamless. Um, the, the, I guess the major thing with this is it, it, it doesn't feel like I can, I can push it right. quite as hard as, as I can push my own Yamaha. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm getting a slightly thinner tone from this clarinet. Um, not necessarily a criticism, you don't always want to have a huge sound. Yeah. Um, well, I think what but, will be interesting is if we then compare that with the other two in this video, uh, so that we're comparing sort of apples with apples, so to speak. Yes, yeah, indeed. Um, just a couple of tech things about the E13. This is the latest version, which they redid a couple of years ago. You can tell, actually, and I'm going to just, sorry, grab that, Simon, for the video. <laughs> There's an E13 badge. The E is much bigger on the newer models. Um, white leather pads, they did some slight modifications to the keys in terms of comfort layout and also the bell is based on the RC which is one of the professional model, um, so the taper on the bell and it's got a flat end as well yes, um, it has. to help with projection in that low mm. end, that's the theory. Um, so subtle differences, but a, a classic that's been regularly updated. We will jump onto another clarinet, I think we'll go to the Yamaha next. But don't forget, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the mouthpiece, the reed and the ligature for playing in this sort of style, uh, basically having to do everything that isn't necessarily just straight classical stuff. Yes. Um, but we'll jump to the Yamaha and we'll be right back in a second. So here we are, we're back with the Yamaha. This is the YCL CX Roman numeral two uh, to denote that it's the second version. Uh, that doesn't mean there are two versions out there. It means this is the current version. Yamaha are very confusing with their numberings. You'll see people listing it on their website with the two, without the two. Just don't panic, everyone. If you're buying a new one, it will be the version that's actually available. Um, but Simon, let's give this a blow because this is the first in the custom range. Mm -hmm. I want to see how it compares. It's, it is a couple hundred pound more expensive than the buffet. So that's okay. the caveat, but let's see how it goes. Yeah, so in, in terms of key work and feel, it's very, very similar to the Buffet. Mm -hmm. um, nice, comfortable key work, very comfortable to play, adjustable thumb rest like the Buffet. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing sort of spectacularly different about the key Under layout the at all. But for me, the sound is, is huge yeah. in comparison. It's much bigger. Yeah. Um, there's a bit more projection. Uh, it, it's a rounder, kind of more focused tone. It's, it's, it's the sort of thing that I'd, I'd be much happier playing, if I'm honest, from, from my point of view, you know, for, for jazz uh, and, um, and that sort of stuff. Yeah, I, I, I really like this. I think it's an excellent clarinet. And so that's because in the, in the you know, in a more in a professional situation or certainly in any advanced playing situation there are times especially with clarinet you need that projection don't you because naturally other instruments 
you know, the trumpet, the saxophone, they have an advantage. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Sound-wise. Mm -hmm. And I, just when we started, we did a quick noodle before uh, we cut into our chat here. I can't tell you how immediate that difference was. Just for me, mm, sat yeah. here, it was like we doubled up the tone, the sound of everything. The, the, everything just felt bigger, didn't it? Yes, it did, yeah. Uh, and I'm not poo-pooing the E13, because that, that's an excellently controllable, very nice, clean-sounding instrument. But I think if you wanted to do more, push more, Play more jazz, leading line clarinet stuff. Yeah, totally. That's way absolutely. Yeah, got, yeah. got more in the locker, let's say. Yeah, it has. Yeah. yeah. Um, similar to Buffet Yamaha, uh, use white leather pads on the CX, which is an upgrade, which has come fairly recently. Beautifully uh, balanced under the hands, I would say the Yamaha as well. And as Simon mentioned, adjustable thumb rests on all of these clarinets, as you would expect mm -hmm. nowadays as well. But we have got a bit of a curveball, which we're going to throw in as, as our third clarinet, which is the Bakun Protégé. Uh, because it's an interesting uh, setup with Bakun, there's lots of different woods and all sorts of things, and we'll get into that. As I say, we'll go back and we'll talk to Simon about his choice of reed, uh, ligature and mouthpiece as well to round us out. We'll be back in just a sec with that Bakun Protégé. So here we are, we're back with the Bakun Protégé in Simon's Grubby Mitts. And this is the Protégé in the Cocobolo wood. They make it in Cocobolo wood, which is more obviously lighter brown as well, just visually. And they also make it in Grenadilla wood, which is what the standard R13, E13, Yamaha, yeah, most things are made of Grenadilla wood. Now, there is a slight difference in the tone. The Cocobolo wood generally we find is a softer, slightly broader sound, whereas the Grenadilla is a bit pingier, a bit, bit edgier sounding. However, let's try this clarinet and let's see what Simon thinks about it in comparison. With yeah, your shirt. it does. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I mean, it's it it, it is a bit quirky, um, you know, but it, it looks beautiful. Well, I was I don't know because of the way it looks, I, I expected it to be perhaps a bit brighter than it actually is. Mm. Um, it, for me, tonally, it sits ha about halfway between the the, the two of them, um, but it's got a really really nice sweet sound. Um, it's got this one has got got an E flat key by the way on the side, which. You know, to be honest, I don't like, or it's very convenient because I grew up without one. Um, but Those I think are, they're, yeah, they're optional on, yeah. on various models. You can have yeah. that on or off. And it's just for that alternate to the right hand. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it does work. It does work very well and, and, and means that uh, you don't have to scribble all over your music quite as much. <laughs> left, um, right, left, right. Left, exactly, yeah. yes. <laughs> but, you know, the... Um, that gold ring in the middle is is is, is lovely, you know. I mean, the, the the way it looks is just absolutely superb, and I, I think that's, you know, that's that's part of it with Bakun. They do look a bit quirky and a, a bit different, and you know, it's a, they're, there's always a talking point. Um, but uh, yeah, really, really like playing this. It's, I think, yeah. I, sorry to interrupt. I think sat here, the, these are three quite different clarinets. This feels like it's got good projection, like maybe not quite as much go as the Yamaha, but maybe in the Grenadilla wood, it would be closer. Mm -hmm. But there was a certain tubbiness, a fatness to the r low end, especially on this uh, protege, which I really like, just that here. Maybe that Cocobola wood gives it that broader, softer, sort of rich sound, if you will, perhaps. Yeah. Um, but Simon's right, it, they look fantastic, and they are available, silver keys, gold keys, a mix of silver and gold, with the flat, without the flat. Um, and as many of you will have seen, if you're clarinet you know, aficionados out there, or you're just looking uh, at the market, Bakun, they originally came in with the barrels and bells, and lots of players adopted them with their own buffets or Yamahas. Mm -hmm. And then over the, over the last 10, 20 years, Bakun have introduced their range of clarinets from student all the way up to pro, and this is kind of the mid-level. What I would say is this, this wood is the same exact quality of wood that they use on the very expensive, the five, six thousand oh, okay. pound clarinets, yeah. made in Canada, and again, adjustable thumb rest, beautiful case, you know, so all of the outfits are, are really nice. So what, what are the main differences between this and the top end ones, if it's the same wood? It's the same wood. Different bore? Or? Yes, different bore. Mm -hmm. So there's more actual processes involved in producing the bore shape on right. the very expensive instruments. 
Uh, some of that is, is um, to do with the number of steps within the bore, the number of shapings within the bore. So it's a, a more complex process to produce, but the actual yeah, pure quality of it is the same. Hand involvement, a little bit on the more expensive ones, you've also got the low F, low C tuning adjuster um, oh, okay. as yeah, well. Yeah. So there's mm -hmm. a few things going on like that. And we've done separate videos with uh, a Bakun player, Peter Silieris, fantastic UK-based classical player, mm -hmm. um, sort of going through that range. But I think it's really interesting to see the Bakun in this environment play more commercially, because actually they did a lot of work with Eddie Daniels when they- Yes, indeed, yeah, yeah. You know, mm. Both big fans of Eddie Daniels here. Mm. Um, and for that sort of crossover work where you're doing a bit of everything, um, you know, the Bakuns can really do that nicely as well. Yeah. So let's just talk about the mouthpiece ligature and reed setup, Simon, because we've mentioned this is obviously a more, like we've said, uh, you know, commercial show, whatever we want to call it. Not strictly classical clarinet, that's what I'm kind yes, of yeah, fumbling yeah, yeah. for, isn't mm -hmm. it? What have you gone for here and, and why do you use this setup? Well, Normally. I mean, it, it was a little bit of a surprise, this, this mouthpiece to me, because um, BG obviously are usually uh, associated with um, accessories like straps and um, cleaning products and, and, mm. and those sort of things. Not, uh, by cleaning products, I mean pull-throughs and yeah, yeah. <laughs> industrial <laughs> I, I don't mean, yeah, sprays <laughs> of, of window cleaner. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, Franck Bichon said, said to me, I, I send you something. I had no idea what something was. Uh, and this turned up in, in, in the post, uh, the B3 mouthpiece. Um, and as he says, it's, it's a, a mouthpiece which they, they were trying, I guess, to, to find a classical clarinet mouthpiece mm. and failing. But this, they kept on coming back to this one, uh, which was a lot more kind of jazz open, um, you know, and, and, and uh, gives you a, a, a perhaps a, a bigger sound than, than you'd expect. So perfect for saxophone players that you're used to piling a load of air down their, um, um, their instruments, mm. uh, which is why it resonated with me particularly. Um, it, it, the, the reed I use on this, I use, tend to use a slightly softer reed on this. I've got a two and a half V16. V12. Um, sorry, uh, V12. He's yes. got his saxophone head on. <laughs> yeah. So, two, yeah, it's a, a, a V12 clarinet reed from Van Doren, two and a half strength. Um, and um, you'll be pleased to hear I'm using the BG Tradition mm. ligature in black. Um, someone, I think, on a, on a video commented a, a, about, can you do a yes. review on the, uh, the Tradition? Well, here it is. Yes. Um, it's, it's lovely ligature. Uh, I really like the, the projection and the, um, the, the, the tone that the, the, the black lacquer gives. I don't know why, but it does seem to affect it. And I'm using black lacquer ligatures across the board on all mm. my instruments now. Um, so, but, but, you know, it's, it, it's a setup that really suits me as well. What are you looking for? Well, you've mentioned a little, you've alluded to it a little bit, but in terms of getting air through the instrument, because we should point out, you actually started on clarinet. I did, So yeah. it's not like yeah. a saxophonist who's trying to pick a clarinet up. He's a clarinet player who then added saxophone, who now does some clarinet as well. But mm. you, you obviously used to playing saxophone, shoveling a lot more air through yeah. you know, bigger mouthpieces. So when you come to a clarinet, if you were playing a more classical setup, you would find that very restrictive, perhaps, to, to get the air Yeah, through, I'd, I'd, I'd find it, I, I guess, tight yes. to play. Mm. Um, you know, I'd, I'd have to adjust my technique quite a lot. Um, I mean, you know, I, I think a lot of clarinetists who play shows um, and, uh, and jazz tend to use a slightly wider laid mouthpiece anyway, but saxophonists, you know, they've gone for Morgans and, and uh, lots of... Uh, Lots of makes that probably if you were a clar classical clarinetist, you wouldn't even consider. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is, I mean, there's no compromise here. It's a great mouthpiece, but yeah. it suits me uh, for the, the, the style of music that I want to play. Because yeah. even though I don't often sit in a wind band. Um, you could. You know, I could. Or um, Dixieland, or you can yeah, kind of do absolutely. everything like it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And if you don't want a red mouthpiece, everyone, don't worry. They do do a black yes. version as well. If you're not quite as gregarious as our friend Mr. Bates here. It's a talking point. Isn't it is it? a talking point. Yeah, exactly. So I think in terms of a kind of a summary, if you will, uh, you know, two things. Most of the clarinets in and around this price from big brands are going to be good. That's, that's the bottom line. Yeah. But there are yeah. differences and it does come down to what you want to do with it. Uh, and that's also the main thing to think about. What sound do you want? What are you looking for? Do you want that big projection? Do you want a darker, woodier sound? 
What do you want? That's the big question. And then the rest of your setup is so important, isn't it? Mm. You could have a great clarinet, but they're not quite the right reed, mouthpiece, lig setup, and you, there's a mismatch. You're not getting Absolutely. what you could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to put you on the spot, and I know you have allegiances in this. You have skin in the game here from a Yamaha point of view. But if I gave you £2,000 today, you're going to buy one and use it as your normal clarinet, what, what are you doing? Um, it, uh, oh, it's, whoa, that, that's a, <laughs> a really difficult question. I love the Yamaha and I love this. It wouldn't be yeah. the buffet, okay. definitely. Okay. I probably Please. want to spend a bit more time playing, playing the two of them. Yeah. Uh, the Yamaha is very familiar. This I love the look of, and it's a bit quirky and a, a, a little bit kind of, you know, the, the, the uh, side keys that I do use quite a lot, these, these side trill keys. Um, I found, found myself not quite as comfortable with as the, uh, the, the normal con kind of conventional um, buffet and Yamaha style. Yeah. But of course, you get used to that. Um, so, well, yeah, I mean... It, I mean, you're on the fence, but I... I, I am. I mean, I, I'll let him sit on the fence. I, I do love this clarinet, and I've not. I've tried backrooms before, and this is the, the nicest I've tried. And, and they they look fantastic, don't they? I mean, yeah. it's yeah. That's just a, a that's a thing of beauty. There we go. Um, Two but, things of beauty. Set yeah. Next to me. So I don't know. I'm going to keep. 50, 50, I'm going to keep 50, my two thousand pounds and give it to someone more decisive. <laughs> that's what I've decided. Um, but hopefully, that's been an interesting video for you to see. Of course, we're coming at this from Simon's point of view vis-a-vis uh, -vis how he plays, what he wants from a setup. My main uh, thing to say to you out there is if you can, especially if you're in the UK, get to us and try these things and get your own opinion about what you feel because they do all play slightly differently. But hopefully mm. this has given you some ideas of what to look at and where to start. Yeah. Would you like to serenade us out, I Simon, would, yes. with this thing of beauty? Ah.